A lot of people are talking about multimeters and how dangerous they can be. They tell stories how they exploded in their hands, how they are not rated for the voltage and current and a lot of different crazy stories. So I decided to also share my stories with multimeters. This is a multimeter I've got several years ago for about $9 and it's pretty nice for the price. It has automatic ranges, it has AC volts, DC volts, resistors, continuity check, diodes, capacitors, frequencies, transistor check, milliamps and amps, AC and DC. Very nice for the price, especially the automatic range. And when I bought it, I just was trying everything. I was trying the voltages, DC, AC, trying measuring resistors, capacitors, whatever. I was just trying quickly all its functions. And when I came to the frequency measurement, I just wanted to try it quickly and I took, took a look into the manual and it says it can handle up to 250 volts at the frequency range. So I just set it to hertz symbol, took the probes, stuck it into the mains and waited for the 50 hertz to be displayed, but suddenly bang! And I had no idea what's wrong because the manual clearly told that 250 volts is okay for the frequency range. So I opened the multimeter up and took a look what happened. And there was a SMD component completely exploded inside and I couldn't even identify what it was. But because I had two pieces of the same multimeter, I opened up the other one and took a look what component it is. And it was just a tiny SMD resistor with 10k value. And I realized this tiny SMD resistor, 10k value, is the only thing in series with the probe when it is set to frequency range. So basically I was sticking the tiny 10 kilo ohm resistor into mains. And of course it exploded. So the information in the manual was completely wrong and this multimeter basically cannot handle mains voltage on frequency range. Which I think is completely wrong for the safety reasons. And I had to find out myself that when I want to measure frequencies in high voltage circuits, I have to set it to AC volts and then press this button to switch it to frequency. And then I am measuring frequency. I can stick it into mains and measure 50 Hz. So, this range is supposed to only measure low voltage circuits. And for high voltage circuits, if you want to measure frequency in high voltage circuits, you have to set it to AC volts and use this button to switch it to frequency. Because this range only has a tiny SMD 10 kilo ohm resistor in series. For high voltages you have to select AC volts and switch it to frequencies so that you have a high voltage resistive divider in series. But the manual tells nothing about this. But my worst multimeter experience and honestly almost a deadly one is just coming. Two months ago I was trying to measure the current of a heater element. It was running at 330 volts and drawing almost 10 amps. And I just took my multimeter, set it to amps hole, turn it on and try to measure it. But suddenly one of the probes literally exploded in my hand. And as you can see the probe is already repaired but now I am using it only for low voltage circuits. And it made me realize that for safety not only the construction of the multimeter is important but also the construction of the probes and cables is really critical. The probes are sometimes a really questionable quality. For example, the cable can very easily come out of the probe. And although the cable has quite a nice isolation, the copper core inside is really thin. This one says 26 American wire gauge. That's not much. And this is supposed to handle 20 amps. Really, the probe says 1000 volts, 20 amps. This must be a joke. And another problem is that as you are using the probe, the cable band is here like this and the copper core slowly breaks inside. And it goes on until most of the copper is broken and just one or two hairs remain. And then the connection looks like this. And then you are going to measure something like 10 amps. The disaster happened with my red probe and let's try if the same disaster will happen with the black one on camera. I was just holding it in my hand, measuring and suddenly 
And now the best part of the video is coming. And this is a slow motion video, so it has no sound, but you can imagine it. And imagine this was happening inside my hand. And it slightly burned me, but miraculously I didn't get an electric shock. And this experience learned me that I should never completely trust my equipment. Because you never know how well it is made and nobody ever knows what can happen. So always take care of your safety and never expect anybody else to take care of it. And this was only 230 volts and 10 amps. This probe tells 1000 volts and 20 amps. So this is Diode Gone Wild and see you in my next videos.